Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo run on this week's Master Nightfall, which is the Proven Grounds. I'm doing it on Top Tree Night Stalker. Uh, I'll be using the Obelisk with the Catalyst again. Wolf Tone Draw is going to be my kind of primary. Um, Threaded Needle is going to be my heavy. Uh, Obelisk, obviously, because the Catalyst is just OP for stuff like this. Well, maybe not OP, but super, super useful. Breaking a, a, a barrier champion shield or any shield because it works against any shield will reload this weapon from reserves and obviously uh, the disruption break gives me 50% extra damage which is why you see so much damage on crits after that. Uh, I'm using particle deconstruction because, well who isn't? Uh, Powerful Friends gives me, if I if I pair it with another Arc mod, gives me an extra 20 mobility, which will help to get the double dodge, which my super sketch Sith Coyote uh, is going to afford me. Uh, I've also got Charged Up, which means I get an extra Charge for Light. Uh, protective Light, so when I become Charged for Light, if I lose my shields, I gain a massive damage reduction. Uh, linear Fusion Ammo Finder on the helmet, Scavenger on the legs. My Wolf Tone Draw has Dragonfly, and I've got a Dragonfly spec on it. And I just wanted to test that out, really, for this. And although it was okay, I, I probably would have stuck with my original one uh, with Frenzy. Uh, and the Threaded Needle obviously has a uh, Vorpal Weapon on it. And I think mine's got Range Finder as well. So we're just going to clear these ads out. The first champion is just up ahead. I wanted to test out how good the, the dragonfly was. And it wasn't too bad. I managed to get a couple of double kills. Uh, it's probably going to be better on... Well, it is better on more trash trash ads. But if you can get a couple of these ads together... Uh, because because, the, because the, the most of them are going to take two shots to kill anyway... If you can if you can chain dragonfly shots to be hitting other ads, then uh, then this could work because it might make subsequent ads that were around the initial explosion, it might make them one one shots. So the first unstoppable is coming up, and before we get there, I just want to wish everybody that's watching this video a happy holidays. However you celebrate it, I hope you uh, are in a good place. I hope 2021 hasn't been too hard on you. Good food, maybe some presents, bad TV, and more Destiny is all you need tomorrow. So, uh, thanks a lot for all the support you guys have given me this year. And again, I hope you and your families have a brilliant Christmas and festive season in general. So, now that I've got that off my chest, uh, once you take that, the first the, the way we're taking the overloads, I'm pretty sure you guys know that, is I'm charging my linear fusion rifle shot, and then I'm just finishing it. It's like four shots, but if you want to save ammunition, you can do one shot from the linear to, to stop the unstoppable, two shots with the, the threaded needle, and then one shot with the obelisk. That will kill the, the unstoppable. So... I like to take the barrier from here and you've got to watch out because in this area you've got, we've already took one of the, the turrets. There's another turret just up here and then there's one up to the left and then there's three along the back. The Scorpius turrets. There we go. So I'm just going to go up there. There he, there he is. And that's him and you'll have a, a bunch of enemies just here. So everything at the moment is from range. The idea is... I don't want to go up too far, but once you go up and you clear clear these enemies, you're going to get your next unstoppable. And obviously, because Obelisk is an anti-barrier, if you can hit, if you hit them in the head through their shield, you'll get the one hit kill. I'm dropping a heap of ammo back here, hopefully, and I'll be back down to to get it afterwards before we go into the strike in proper. So that. Giant pod that just dropped down signals the arrival of our unstoppable. When you kill, <laughs> it sounds kind of weird, when you stop the unstoppable, so when you kill the unstoppable, then the boss will come out with another unstoppable and smads. <clears throat> We're going to do most of the boss stuff from the left-hand side, although I do kill the unstoppable. I'm pretty sure... It, it, I'm pretty sure I'm, I have to come back down here for a special. 
Could be wrong. So, there's we're unstoppable. He's dead. I don't have a lot of special. So we dropped heavy. I'll take out the Scorpius turret. Now the ads and the boss and the unstoppable are coming out. Wherever you are when the boss comes out, the ads will come looking for you. So as you can see, I'm already getting hit. I say getting hit. They're already firing at me. I'm going back down here to see if I've dropped any special. There we go. I got a little bit of special. Now I'm going to take out, because there's a couple of red bars. There's a, a phalanx as well somewhere about normally. There's the phalanx. So. Arbalist. The arbalist would have, was going through the shield. It was me that was missing. So what I'm going to do is. Normally I wouldn't do this. But I'm going to take. Normally I'd go over to the left and do all of this. But as you can see. This is where I normally deal all the, the damage at this section. Because I've got built in cover with this kind of big stone a rock form thing next to us. So there's one unstoppable. We're going to stop him. And we'll hit him. And kill him. Four shots. One to stop, three to kill. Now, the reason why I never switched to the Arbalist is because I've got a lot of, I've got a lot more heavy line about than I do a special. So as you can see, one clip takes just over just over uh, one health bar, so that's four shots. So, as you can see here, we're getting a wave of ads. And with this wave of ads, it's the last unstoppable in this section. And that's all we heavy, but like I said, I've got quite a bit of heavy lying about. So I'm going to run over here, he's in his immunity shield. So, so this boss, these bosses in here, they... Uh, once you, once you do a certain amount of damage to them, they go inside this protective bubble. And you've got to go in the center and shoot it. The, the, the strategy, because it comes into play at the boss for doing that, is the center generator that's powering the shield, it will act as, as a shield for you. So as long as you're on the other side of it, on the direct, directly facing his weapon, he, uh, he can't shoot you. He'll shoot the center thing. Top tip for going in to break that shield. Be very careful, even if you're using invis. Be very careful to not get too close to him, because if you come out of your invis and, and you are close enough for him to stomp, his stomp is ridiculous. It, it will kill you by sending you flying through the air into a wall. There's nothing you can do about it. There's no escaping it. So, when you do come out your invis and you're breaking that shield, make sure you're on the other side of the, the, the bubble. It's, it's, you know, it's the small things we can do to make our life easier. So, I'm just, as you can see, I'm just, there we go, I'm just grabbing special, uh, heavy, anything that's lying about. I'm pretty good, I'm 19 on each. Uh, well, I'm 20 now on special. This, this... This strike is dictated by two main areas. The tank room, which we are heading to now, and the boss room. Everything else is filler. You can do your damage from certain places and be in relative cover and relative safety. The tank room, either it, it's a nightmare. It's, it, it's not super, super difficult, but it's a nightmare concept. If you were explaining it to somebody, you're going to have champions flooding in, you're going to have phalanxes, you're going to have, you know, dogs periodically, you're going to have legionaries, you're going to have elite shielded enemies. And the whole time that's happening, there's going to be two massive tanks at the bottom of the room shooting at you that are one, they will one hit you. It's a nightmare scenario. The hunter, on the, however, has the utility available to him to confuse all of that with invis. Now you're not, I, I am not a great advocate when it comes to invis, especially when people are going invisible and running past things. Yes, have I done it? Yes. Have I made a lot of guides for doing that? No. Because it's, it's the guide should stand up for that character, I suppose, and maybe, you know, going invisible and running past things is a cool way to do things. I, I just feel like it's kind of cheating. But 
it's 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 part of the hunter's uh, utility. It's part part of the hunter's uh, ability set. So, but what we're going to do here is use the invis to draw the tank's fire to one area, so that we can deal damage to the tank from another area, and then it will have to readjust its aim, and we'll probably have got two shots off, and then we can move again. The great thing about invis. Especially in the strike, is it just helps you stay alive. It helps you move between cover. And the adds, if done right, especially the tanks, they won't be able to track your movement. So if you go invis in cover, you show the tank your face from the side furthest away from where you're going to go. And then go invis and get out of there. The tank will keep firing in that area till you pop up again. Now not until your invis runs out, until he sees you again. So... As you can see, we got this is the tank room, so we're, we're just doing a bit of work from up here. We took out took a, a couple of centurions, cut a couple of phalanxes. I think one phalanx got away, and then we're taking out these interceptors. Now, they're the pilots, which are scions, are void shielded, right? So I don't really want to spend ages trying to kill the champ because trying to kill the scions because they've got a, they're really difficult to hit the crit on in that interceptor. But the interceptor does a lot of damage so you can just shoot the the interceptors from up top there is one of the elites and you've seen there broke the shield even though we're not matching the element of the shield the obelisk doesn't care you know the out the obelisk is only interesting interested uh, should i say in ending lives it, it doesn't care about <laughs> it doesn't care about uh matching elements and it's about time maybe 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 another weapon like that would be good again you see there once you break the shield i mean this is this is a master level piece of content i'm not over leveled in this cut on this content uh by you know that this isn't my, my main account so i'm not like miles higher than the content i think I'm going to try and get the break, and you see there, got the break, and once you get that break, the disruption break damage, you have to take advantage of it. Break the shield, and you can tell the difference. The first shot, although I got yellow numbers, was only 18,000, the second shot was 68,000. That's the crit. Uh, yeah, so I'm not completely over leveled in this activity. You can over level any activity by 20 levels, so to be as powerful as you can be in this this strike you need to be 1370 i think i'm 1352 uh, on a character that is oh you you have seen my sixth coyote pretty soon people are going to start start asking asking for money for my hunter that sixth coyote is pathetic i haven't managed to get another one to drop uh it, i think it's the vendor role i've got i think i bought it from collections so, this character has been thrown together in a little, about six weeks. So, I mean, it's not, if this had been my main account, which I haven't played on in two or three months, and it's still sitting at 1373. It was 1373 after the first eight weeks. I think if I'd have been doing it on PlayStation, I think after the first eight weeks, I would have been the highest power level on PlayStation on console. Oh, obviously, console. I think I was 4th or 5th on Xbox. There was a couple of PC players that had lived in the throwaway, which isn't really playing the game as far as I'm concerned. But uh, hey-ho, we all do what we do. So I can understand in some of my videos people saying, oh, but you've got this, you've got that. This, this character hasn't even got all the ammo finders. Nearly got them all. Uh, it's about where you attack from as much as what you attack with. So, we've took out that. That ship was the last thing, Interceptor. In my mind, for this strategy to work, I need to take one tank immediately. And there we go. So, now this blast kind of wall here, I'm going to take this champion, or at least do some damage to him. There we go. That's him taken. The tank on the right hand side, the one that's still alive, is firing at me. Now, I understand, because I'm not an idiot, 
the tank has seen me now. And the tank will shift its its uh, its focus to my new position. So I am running from side to side. Uh, just going to use the obelisk. This is the new strategy. If I go up here, the for some reason, I don't I don't know if it's this this one. Just going to get a couple of shots off on the tank. The blast barrier, I will take very little splash damage from this blast barrier. And that, it doesn't really sound like much of a strategy, but once I thin out some of the ads, uh, once I start thinning the ads out, you see the tank is still firing at the last position that he's seen me. So what I've done take out those and I'm dodging and going back hopefully uh, hi blitz uh, hopefully the tank never seen me go in vis and run over here and it will still fire at my last position so we'll just take out that sniper dodge go back grab that special so the tank is still firing at the last position that it's seen me dodge and get back over here so the tank won't fire at me while I'm over here. It's about just try and find this tank and we'll just put two nice shots there. Here are the dogs. Invis and get out of dodge. The tank won't track you 100%. Just make try and find the tank again. There we go. The tank 100% won't be able to track you if you go invis in cover for a kickoff. That's the first thing you need to do is go invis in cover. And when you do move to the next position, don't don't be like just trying to get out, trying to uh, get shots off. If needs be, just go if you have to. Now remember, they did change the ability so your invis isn't as, as good as it was. You don't get it back as quickly. It doesn't last as long. Uh, once you take the two tanks out, once you take the two tanks out, that is it. The rest of the ads will run down to the bottom and bother with you. And you can take them from range. I want this champion down first. So just to recap, while I'm just like trying to finish off the ads down here, come into this room, There'll be a two two uh, normal normal cabal uh, centurion kind of looking guys legionaries. There'll be two of those. Break his shield and then get the one hit. There'll be two legionaries, two phalanx. Then we take the two interceptors from up top. When I drop down, I go to the right and I take whatever elite is in the center, not the champions. I take the elite first. Sometimes you get two elites. If you only get one elite, then you'll get the elite sniper, the elite scion. So if you're lucky, it's, it's random each time. If you're lucky, you'll get two shielded elites because they're actually, they don't, you know, scion will go and hide. And it can be a bit of a drain on your ammunition trying to pop shots off and you can't get too close because there's other things there. Uh, and then when the tanks come out, as you would have seen, I took the left the left hand tank first. For some reason the left one has a better angle on your position than the right one does. Take that out. I think it's if you if you can get two precision shots on each on th on on three three out of the four kind of legs, you'll kill the tank. And then you want to keep moving position and making sure you can safely the minute you see that the tank is firing at a different position, then you can try and you know, if you make sure you've got your invis first, and then you can you can get shots off on the tank, and it's the same. Two precision shots on on three, two precision shots on each uh, three legs, or whatever you want to call them. Not really legs, but uh, uh, wheel covers. Three out of the four of them. If you can get two shots on each of them, you'll kill the tank. And then all the ads are run to the front, and you can you can you can range attack them. 
if a champion pushes you, you've seen me do it, if a champion pushes you, then it's worthwhile, if you can, to take, take one champion. The reason why I like to take a tank first is A, it's less fire for me to worry about, and B, if I do take a champion, I, I'm not sure, I can't really, I can't really confirm this, but it seems like if you take a champion before you take a tank, when you take the first tank, you'll get another champion. So taking the tank before you take the champion is beneficial. So that is area number one for a strategy or difficulty of, ta you know, tactical nuance or whatever you want to call it, however you want to look at it. This is just annoying. So you see what I'm doing here. I'm just pretty sure everybody knows what's going on here. If, if you don't, then you're in for a treat. Because in this area, your biggest worry is not dying from rocks. Now... I have been doing this strike for some time. Last time I sold that, I'd done it on the Warlock, which is why I'm... Do you know, this is, kind of, this is kind of Hunter Week, I think, because the next video that's going up, and I'll be commentating it right after this, is a solo flawless Master Presage on the Hunter. And it's a clean run. I actually had enough time at the, at the end to sit and wait for my super. I think I had five and a half minutes left or something like that at the end. So... When you're jumping across here, you'll see I've cleared those enemies out. Just going to take this next Scorpius turret out. Watch out, because there are there are two kind of two other rooms to clear. Two, two, you've got to get two of these orbs to slam them. So there's another room we're going to have to go into. We walked into this room. We're going to have to go into another room and clear it of ads to pick up the orb in that room. And you're going to have to go past two of these. And the problem is, see how high I jumped there? Uh, because of that. Look at those rocks. They hit you, they can kill you. So, as if, you, uh, if you're at all, if you can at all, make sure when you're going across there, make sure you get some height on the jumps, just to clear any, any of their, their paths or trajectories, so that you're keeping yourself as safe as possible. So, in this next area... You've got an orb over the other side that you have to go and collect. If, if I would have been feeling confident, uh, or if this had been a run that I maybe was doing for my own personal pleasure, uh, I might have attempted to just do this really quickly and try and get the orb to, you know, to appear so I could just. Go in Viz and go and get it. I'm not even sure you can do that. I think you've got to clear the ads before it appears. You'll always have a barrier in each each one of these sections. In fact, there's quite a few barriers. This is, for me, there there aren't really, you know, the kind of the 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 overloads are kind of the unstoppables are kind of built up. In this area, this is where nearly all the the barriers are between the tank room and here. So once you kill this 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 guy, now I actually let him run away, which means I'm gonna have to use another obelisk shot, which I thought would have killed him, but all it done was break his shield. Once you kill the elite that's in here, you're gonna get a wave of ads come into the room behind you, the, the room where you've got to slam your orb. So there we go, and we'll just finish him off there. I thought I had my super. If I if I'd have been paying more attention. I 100% would not have killed that elite, but if, there's a, there's a sniper above us as well, but if, if like me, for some reason that's what you do, you can come into this room and fight the ads. You can go over to the other side, make sure there's no ads hiding, and you can sh clear the doorway at least. The champion and two kind of elite legionaries will... Uh, They'll chill out of the room, the way we're going to look now, they'll chill off to the right. So you can actually come across here and just just see what you can shoot from across here. And as you can see, you can see a few of the ads. I actually, I think I think one of the one of the gladiators manages to sneak attack me here. Like that. 
I thought he was inside the room. Uh, his mates don't get the, don't get the same chance though. So once you once you've cleared these ads, there's another, there'll be another centurion, another gladiator around here. So I'm just gonna go in invis and and go around and just like make sure there he is. I'll just back away, give him line of sight, or give myself line of sight, and there we go. Now there'll be two elite. Uh, Cabal and a champion, a barrier champion here. So I'm just going to use the Arbalist. Now I've got to make sure, and this obviously we've spoke about breaking the shield and uh, breaking the shield and, and getting the reload. I don't know why I didn't get the reload that time. I think I never let the shield appear properly, and that's why I broke the shield so quickly on, on, on that barrier, but didn't get the reload. But, no harm, no foul. So, once you get this orb, I'm just looking for a special because we're nearly finished this area, and after this area, it's the boss. So we'll grab this orb. Once we slam this orb, what's going to happen is another wave of ads is going to appear, but this time you're going to get a barrier and an unstoppable. So now we are going to use for tether, because at the start of the boss fight, you've got to activate a terminal at the start, and by activating that terminal, it gives you your, your full super back. So, tether the door for all the dogs. And one kill kills all the dogs. Now, the tether's kind of a little bit funny, because the tether... It, it will last longer if you get kills while something's tethered. If you don't get kills while it's tethered, there we go, we've got the shield break and we've got the reload. And I've seen a ton of special there, so... Yeah, the, the tether doesn't last that long if you don't get kills whilst to tethered enemies. Which I've always found quite strange for a super. But, uh, well, it is what it is. That is this room cleared. I'm just going to have one more last look for heavy. But that is this room cleared. That is us on a straight run to the boss. So, I actually thought that the boss, that the, the, the strike, when I looked at the time, how long it had taken me. I, was, I couldn't remember because it's been a while since I've even done this as a master. I think the last times I was doing these would have been uh, with on GMs and I couldn't remember how long the strike should take or how long it did normally take but I'm just looking now it's like it's like a 41 minute strike this run take off the time I've been looking for ammunition a couple of minutes it's a 15 minute boss battle that's actually not too bad Especially when you see what you're actually what you're actually doing at the boss. So, the boss battle works in in, in in a very straightforward manner. You'll activate the town to start the fight. You do a little bit of damage, then you'll get two legionaries and and one phalanx on each side will appear. Kill them. Do more damage. The boss is gonna go into his immunity phase where he goes into his shield when that happens you'll get two unstoppables one from the left <clears throat> one from the right you've got to go inside the shield shoot it like we did right at the start rinse and repeat but when you break the shield you'll get the two phalanx and the and, and the, the, the two the, the one phalanx and the two legionaries on each side straight away do a bit more damage He'll go into his immunity phase. Uh, and you'll get two unstoppables. There is... The only other thing to add to that... Is... He has these uh, mortar fire... I don't even know... They, they, they show up on, on, on your screen... Like... Uh, like grenades... So as you can see, that was my uh, that was my protective light. That's why I got the resist times four. That will stay there. 
until you regenerate your shield. These are these things here, and you'll see here when I turn round, if I turn round, they show up on the screen as mini group as like grenades, as a grenade symbol. And he he fires those intermittently. See how see how the screen flashed there? That that'll come into play when, when he goes when he goes into his immunity phase. That we're just gonna let him they're not infinite, he will run out of fire in those in each phase. And you can just wait for him, to, which is what we're gonna do. See how the whole room kinda lit up? We just go in here a little bit. See how they show up as little grenades? You'd have seen that at the side of the screen. Now, if you are if you are tempted to throw uh, snowballs at them, you will hit them for fourteen thousand, just about fourteen and a half thousand, and then an additional, which I'm not really sure what gives you the additional two and a half thousand. So it's about seventeen thousand you'll hit for a for a uh, snowball. It does not. It, it, it will look as if it has frozen him, but it will not freeze him. So, if you are getting low on ammunition, you probably could throw a couple of snowballs at him if you wanted. I didn't want to do that, because I've already done it. But I didn't want to do that, because when the dawn goes away, you know, th then then part of this video becomes, becomes invalid. As simple as that. So, I'm getting to the point, his first health bar is almost gone. So, I'm getting to the point where he, he is going to go immune, and I'm going to get to... Uh, unstoppables so I need that's why I keep switching damage between that's why I'm using the bow I'm trying to save my linear uh, fusion rifles for doing damage to the champions when you're gonna take his you know when you get close to taking his first health bar make sure you're not doing that while he's firing these little grenadey things there he goes because you don't want the unstoppables to come out one on each side the, the other one comes out from the exact same place but on the other side. You don't want the unstoppables to come out and you can't fight them because well you're 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 in here. And if they both came if one came to one side and another came to the other, there's a good chance you'd die here. So make sure that you can actually you can actually fight these unstoppables. So luckily he took his sweet time uh, walking all the way around and there we go I switched to I switched to the obelisk to save my heavy ammo because the obelisk as I say you can stop the unstoppable two crits to his tank on his back and then one obelisk shot will kill him but I need to make sure that I've got obelisk shot uh, threaded needle shots for one next set, we'll, we've got one more set of champions to come. Uh, so I need to make sure I've got ammo to do that. What we're doing now, and you'll see this kind of track in front of us, this track here. It will light up and it will flash. Like that. That lets you know the boss has fired at another set of these fireballs. When this thing stops flashing, when it doesn't do that every 10 seconds or whatever it is, he has run out of fireballs to throw at you. So, you'll see the other side of where I'm standing. There's like a groove. There's one each side. It's like the very center of this little track hunt that we're in. This is your safe spot. Anywhere else, as you'll see there, you will burn. So, I felt as if he'd stopped shooting. And this is how you know if he's actually stopped. Get him, come outside, come and have a look at him. And if he fires them... You know it hasn't finished. So what I'm doing there is obviously... I felt like he, he might have finished because it went on quite a while. So I came out and I just wanted... I'm, I'm, all I'm wanting to do here is I wanted to make sure he was done. I also wanted to draw the boss to the other side of this bubble because going into the, these bubbles... It's uh, can be dangerous because if if he if you're a little bit too close and he stomps, like I've already said, that stomp will kill you. So 
get these ads both sides. This this can be, sometimes it can be a good way to get ammunition. Now the boss now the boss will be more mobile. So you want to you want to kind of get them into one section. I've got a bit of special there. I'm looking to see where the you know where the boss is, so we're getting. He's on the other side of that wall right in front of us. So I'm gonna go over here. We want to start seeing where he is. And we want him to move. Because in this section, what will happen is he'll move from left to right and then he'll settle on a place. Now, we know that there's still ads up there. That's the phalanx gone. And there's my centurions. Now, you'll see I didn't run back in. I'll get that ammo. When the fireballs come. If the, uh, the fireballs do line of sight. So, as the crow flies. So, he's fired them there. So if I back around here, I moved because something jumped. But if I back, if I back away so that the fireballs can't come straight to me, they'll hit a wall first. Then I don't have to keep going underneath. I can just use the side of the wall where that cleaver is. I can use that as as my cover. It's normally it's normally not that close to that wall. So you see, just gonna let them hit that wall. He's now firing the floor, so it's worthwhile going to the other side. And you can just, f normally he'll feel like pick a sp spot up there and and he won't run away from that spot. But what, I've, what I noticed in this run is he never stayed away much far, farther away from the center. Now he's went over the other side so I've got to watch out. I'll dodge, go this, check for any ammo. Try and get them to come back up here. And now I'll dodge, go and this and get out here. See if I can take him from this side. Because he normally does settle on a spot. But he seemed very fidgety in this room. Now we're almost to the point where he's going to go immune. I think I hit him a couple of times he gets that immune. And there we go. So dodge. He's going to jump up above where we were going under. He's going to jump up on top of there. And we are going to push down here. Now we're all the way at the bottom. The unstoppable left and right are going to come out. The reason why you come down here on the bottom, and, and, and I may as well add this in. Most of what I'm doing here is the same strategy as what you would do in a GM, apart from the tank room. Because you'd be, be with the, I mean, I'm not talking about solo, I'm talking about if you want to bring a team in here. Solo, I'm pretty sure this would work roughly the same. I'll just go up here, get the ammo. Now, the reason why you come down here is A, give yourself space away from the, the the unstoppable so you can take both of them. And B, the boss, if you go if you're a butt underneath, if you're in a, a you know, obviously this is a solo guide. Get away from the overload the unstoppables, giving yourself space to take them from. And the boss can't be shooting anything at you. If you were underneath during this section. Uh, now I said the boss can't be shooting anything. These two blast shields here. You cannot go in front of them. Because the boss will just start firing his cannon at you. So what I've done is I've, I've just stood behind one. And I'm doing a bit of target practice. Because once he stopped firing those. We have to go back up top. Get up into that shield. Break it. And then we're in the final phase of the damage. Now, there are going to be some people that are going to say, well, why didn't you just go up? You've got the invis. For anybody that's new to the, my videos, I like to do things that are repeatable, not 
I just survived by the skin of my teeth there, or you know, sometimes you will, you know, sometimes it will be close, but not for, not because the strategy was bad, just things happen. I just change their mind. AI learns. Uh, so this, what I'm doing here, works 100% of the time. So you can stand up here, be clear of his void cannon, be clear of his, the fireballs, give yourself space from the, 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 the overload, the unstoppables. And if you were coming in here on the Warlock, the pillars that I'm running behind, that I'm trying to run behind, you can use them as cover, block your his line of sight on you. So dodge, go and viz. Again, we'll get up here. And we're just keeping to the edge. And there we go. As soon as we break his shield, we're going to go back underneath. Just throw a grenade, try and clear some of these enemies quickly. Because now the boss won't settle on any area. He will just walk all the way around. And when you appear somewhere else, he'll go there next. Burning because I wasn't right in the mid. We know that there's a bunch of enemies up. And if push comes to shove, they could be a good source of ammunition, should I need it. And there's the boss. Make sure you don't... I cut that one a little bit close. Make sure you don't, because... He... You see that teleport? You just gotta be careful. And there, we've got a bit of special. And we'll put my heavy into him first. He jumps over like that. He won't, you'll see in this, he won't always jump. Sometimes he'll just walk around. But if he jumps like that, just get out of there. Because before you know it, he could be right in front of you. And he, if he gets that close to you, his stomp mechanic will kill you very, very easily. So he really has went round there. I think he went like quite far around this time. You can still see the flashes on your screen. Uh, where he's charging his fire bolts and for some reason he's, he's stomping the ground there. Doing decent damage and now he's kind of Got, he's got a good line of sight on me, so he's he's not pushing really. When I backed away, that's when he did push. And the minute he goes to jump, he gets that close. Let's get out of there. And mid air kill. And there we go, guys. That is the run, platinum run, solo master. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As I as I said in one of my last videos, I'm going to make sure that I keep, get at least two videos out a week. Uh, and even though it's Christmas, we don't stop. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned maybe something that might help you do this. The next video, which will be going up maybe Christmas Day, so that's t that is later on today. Yeah, it's Christmas Day now. As the Solo Master Presage Flawless. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day, all of yous. And I will see you guys in the next video.